One cells see elegans embryos divide asymmetrically by moving their mitotic spindle towards the posterior of the cell. Two spindle-based pathways involving astral microtubules in the central spindling complex then position the cytokinetic cleavage furrow so that it passes through the spindle midzone, dividing the embryo into two unequally sized cells. Anne Paclay and colleagues at the CNRS and Institute of Genetics and Development in Rennes, France, discovered that an additional pathway regulates furrow position in worm embryos while studying the function of the ubiquitin ligase subunit Cullin 5. I want you to know what is it doing during embryogenesis. And actually the Cullin 5 mutants alone, they do not have obvious defects. And as I was working on polarity and power proteins, I started to test possible genetic interaction between Cal5 and different power mutants. And I found this very nice genetic interaction between Cal5 and Par4, where we see that the fluor is not the right position. Cullin 5 single mutants divided just like wild type embryos. In Par4 mutants, however, the cleavage furrow was slightly shifted towards the anterior, and in Cal5 Par4 double mutants, this shift became much more pronounced. So far, in all the known mutants that had defects in fluor position, the defect was due to a defect in spindle position. But what we very surprisingly found is that in Cal5 Par4 embryos, actually the mitotic spindle was localized properly towards the posterior of the embryo. So what we had basically was an uncoupling between the position of the spindle and of the fluor, which was something which, at least to our knowledge, had never been described before. The central spindlin and astral microtubule pathways that normally couple spindle and furrow positioning were still active in Cal5 Par4 mutant embryos. Packley and colleagues therefore investigated whether Cullin 5 and Par4 might position the cleavage furrow by controlling the anilin family of cytokinesis regulators. Jean Claude Lades lab had found that Par4 is a negative regulator of anilin 2. So we thought we should have a look at this. And we found that anilin 2 is really strongly accumulating in Cal5 Par4 embryos. So to test if this was important and linked to our phenotype, we then removed anilin 2 in Par4 Cal5 embryos. And this is where we see a suppression of the phenotype, indicating that anilin 2 must be responsible, at least partly, for the shift of the fluor towards the anterior. Anilin-2, in turn, inhibits a larger member of the anilin family called anilin-1. The cleavage furrow was strongly shifted towards the anterior of embryos lacking anilin-1 and PAR-4, but embryos lacking anilin-1 and cullin-5 position their furrows correctly, indicating that an anilin-independent pathway must also function downstream of PAR-4. PAR-4 is known to regulate kinases from the AMPK-related family. And two of these kinases are known to be involved in polarity or asymmetric cell division. One is PAR1, which is very well known for its role in the first asymmetric division. But surprisingly, we found that PAR4 was not acting through PAR1 for this particular phenotype. So then we went to look for another kinase, which is PIG1. This is the homologue of vertebrate milk. And we found that actually PIG1 is involved in the anilin 1 independent pathway and that removing both PIG1 and alinin 1 gives a very strong shift of the furrow towards the anterior. The furrow was so strongly shifted in these mutants, in fact, that the embryos would often fail to segregate their chromosomes correctly. To understand more about these furrow position defects, Pakley et al. visualized furrow ingression using GFP tagged myosin 2. If you remove anilin 1 and PAR4, or anilin 1 and PIG1, the fluor starts to ingress roughly at the right position, close to the central spindle, consistent with our other data showing that the signaling from the mitotic spindle is fine. But then the fluor moves towards the anterior. So the anilin 1 and PIG1 pathway are important to keep the fluor close to the spindle midzone. Pakley et al. noticed that active myosin 2 accumulated at the anterior cortex of anilin 1 PAR4 mutants during cytokinesis, whereas in wild type embryos, myosin is removed from the anterior cortex after anaphase onset. 
Since myosin is known to induce furrow ingression in asymmetrically dividing neuroblasts, the researchers suspected that the abnormal accumulation of myosin in mutant embryos might be responsible for the shift in cleavage furrow position. And indeed, if we inactivate myosin at the uh, onset of cytokinesis, then we do not see the shift of the furrow towards the anterior anymore. And if we get overactivation of myosin by completely independent means, then we also see the fluor forming towards the anterior of the embryo. So what I think we have shown is that two pathways, an aniline-dependent and aniline-independent pathway, in which there is the kinestic one, prevent the accumulation of activity in myosin at the anterior cortex during cytokinesis. And this is really essential to prevent myosin from shifting the fluor towards the anterior of the embryo. In some cells, like in neuroblast, the spindle and myosin position coincide, so they induce fluorine more or less at the same position. But in other cells, like in the serious embryo, the position of the spindle and myosin do not coincide. So basically, the position of the cytokinesis fluor results from the balance between opposite forces, which come on one end from the spindle, on the other end from myosin. And it's really important to regulate myosin to make sure that the equilibrium between the two forces set up the fluor position at the spindle mid zone, otherwise there are strong and segregation defects. Packley and colleagues now want to investigate exactly how Pig1 and Anilin1 regulate myosin and how this is coordinated with the cell cycle. In the meantime, however, you can learn more about how C. elegans embryos coordinate spindle and furrow position during asymmetric division in the paper by Packley et al., published in the September 28, 2015 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.